The Bank of Canada continued with their interest rate pause on Wednesday in a move that surprised absolutely no one. However, they also released their quarterly monetary policy report, and something I noticed was that they pushed back the projection for inflation returning to the 2% target to 2025. This caught my interest because it seems like they're always predicting that inflation will return to the target about one and a half to two years from now. This is something I've been thinking about since seeing this chart of how the bank's inflation projections were repeatedly updated over the past few years, with the model seeming to be mean reverting, meaning that the projections will always return to the long-term average. Looking at the way these projections have evolved and looking back at the old monetary policy reports, there's a very obvious trend that when inflation was rising rapidly, the bank was always predicting that it was about to peak next quarter before starting to drop back down towards the target. Obviously, that didn't pan out, and inflation shot up to 8% before the bank finally started hiking interest rates. There was also a good article in the Globe and Mail about how the Bank of Canada is overhauling their core economic forecasting models. So, I decided to do a little digging into some technical papers about one of the two core models that they use currently, which is called the Terms of Trade Economic Model, or TOTEM. And this is another one of those situations where I like to say, the more you know, the worse it gets. One thing that caught my eye in this 2006 paper on the first generation of TOTEM is that because of the way parameters are set up in the model, inflation tends to return to the target value quickly, usually in a year and a half, or six quarters, as economists like to say. This paper is about the first generation of TOTEM, and we're currently on the third generation, but it seems like these parameters are still baked into the model. This was very interesting to me, because when I look through the Bank of Canada's monetary policy reports from the last few years, you pretty much always see them predicting that inflation will return to the target in about six to eight quarters. This is true in the latest report they released on Wednesday, but it was also true in April of 2021 when inflation was first starting to rise. But again, they projected that it would return to the target in a year and a half to two years, even if the bank kept interest rates at rock bottom. Then, as I mentioned earlier, when inflation was rising rapidly, they always projected that inflation was about to peak next quarter before sinking back down to the target rate. This makes me suspect that the model has a strong tendency to revert to the target inflation rate regardless of what's going on in the economy. In fact, in this 2023 paper discussing the need for an updated model, they mentioned that rule of thumb price setters in the model, which are basically businesses that set prices or wages depending on what has happened in the past rather than what they expect in the future, set their price increases based on the bank's inflation target. So, when you run the model, of course the results naturally drift closer and closer towards the inflation target. There's a similar situation in our other core economic model, called LENS, where inflation expectations are weighted towards the bank's inflation target. As a real-life equivalent, a rule of thumb price setter would be like a grocery company looking at what's happening and saying, well, I know inflation is high and we could raise prices a lot if we want to, but gosh darn it, the target is 2%, so we're only going to raise our prices by 2% and give up some of our profits to help the bank achieve their macroeconomic goals. How realistic does that sound to you? I don't think it seems right, but it's a major component of how the current models work. In terms of mathematical modeling, this kind of thing is what are referred to as cranking the dials. You're changing parameters or introducing fictitious elements to try to get your model to match what's happened in the past, but really you should be trying to fill those gaps in your model with things that exist in real life.